Alrighty, welcome to a three on three cube draft. It is myself, Updraft Elemental, and Connor. All right, versus Mac, Slacks, and Janara. I would say we're a bit of an underdog uh, based on my past experiences with my teammates. So we'll we'll see how this goes. And of course, Mac and Slacks are both mighty cubers. Janara also is a is a frequent cuber, but I draft a ton with both Mac and Slacks, and a lot of respect for those guys' cube game. Uh, I'm going to take Polluted Delta first pick. Not the most thrilled about it, but I mean, uh, the best fetch land or the second best, I don't know. Star Tarn and Delta are the, are the two best. Flooded Strand is third, Misty's fourth, something like that. <laughs> or maybe Misty's third and Flooded Strand is fourth. Either way, it's a fine, you know, not busted opening pick. And then it's, I think, better than taking Cradle or Chariot or Ballista or any of those things. So. Take Pluto Delta and second pick. Honestly, I might just take Wooded Foothills. So it's interesting. On the one hand, Steam Vents makes Delta into a tri land, you know, a Grixis land. Whereas Wooded Foothills, it doesn't combine with Delta except that you want duels or triumphs to feed both of them. There's also Emrakul here, but I don't really like taking Emrakul, especially this is a three on three. So. I feel the combo decks are a little bit worse. Starting with two fetch lands gives you a ton of flexibility. So I'm going to take that and let's see. Steam Vents, Watery Grave, Emrakul, one of the big artifacts, Cybe, Firebolt. Yeah, those will probably all go. But uh, having two fetches to start with is is not a bad place to be. Oh, maybe make that three. Maybe we just take the third fetch. We're going to make fetch happen. Take that over Leovold and Grist because one of those two has a decent chance of coming back because I think Noble, Skyclaver fairly likely to go. Someone might want Ulamog. There's also Virtue, Oust, Battlesphere, Touch the Spirit Realm. Get Lost is a solid card. So I don't know that Leovold or Grist are going to come back, but uh, taking these three fetch lands, so I now have, it's kind of nice. I have two black fetches, two green fetches, then one blue and one red, if you look at all the colors. But this, this sets me up pretty nicely to kind of draft whatever is open, and I really do like drafting fair decks in three-on-threes. Because you see less cards overall, so the unfair decks might be missing more pieces. And look, now here I easily take Memory Lapse. This card's a great interactive spell. And I'm the best, probably the best person at the table to make use of Vindicate or Witherbloom Command, which are both very good cards. They're just kind of hard to cast. Witherbloom actually looks amazing in this deck because I'll easily have a land in the graveyard. But definitely going to take Memory Lapse. I expect Mother of Runes, Sahili, maybe one of Star of... Prism, maybe both Charter Course to be gone. And I think Vindicate and Witherbloom have a pretty good chance of coming back. This pack has... <laughs> I'm just going to take another fetch land. I actually am too, is the funny thing. I, I think I think Flooded Strain is just still going to be better than Duress or Skydiver. There's just so many playables here. Oh, there's a Basalt Monolith for that Kinan too. Just to keep that in mind. And now I've got almost the Infinity Gauntlet of fetches here. And now I think that opens the door for me taking Iteration. So looking at what we've got, I could take Exarch, I could take Spellcaller, Chandra, Abraid, Iteration. They're all very close. I think I'll take Iteration. It's a good card advantage spell. I think what this deck with great mana is going to want is ways to get card advantage because it's going to play a ton of removal. And one, two, three, four, five plus Black Cleave Cliffs, Evolve Sleeper. I think something there has a pretty good shot at coming back. And now, I think I'm just gonna Elite Spellbinder here. It's the best card. I'm basically operating under the assumption that I can cast whatever I want. And that's not to say that I'm, I am I don't wanna like, maybe like I would have prioritized a Grixis card over a Spellbinder, but I don't think Damnation is really what I want compared to Spellbinder. I think, I'd rather have a slightly more proactive card there, and uh, I like Dam or uh, I like Spellbinder a good amount. Mind Collapse is also fine, but I'd rather not sack my lands. I like Mind Collapse the most when you're very proactive, like red aggro or blue red tempo, that sort of thing. Red green beats. It's less good in this kind of like five color deck that's, you know, going to be playing a lot of cards that answer opposing cards, like Wither Bloom Command, like uh, Vindicate one of those two wheels. You know, something like Dismember, what have you. Okay, so Citadel came back, so did Psy, so did Turok. I'm going to take Firebolt. Firebolt's great. It's a good little removal spell. I think Turok is still a little bit 
ambitious when it comes to mana costs, triple black, and I don't think, I don't prioritize Swift Reconfigure Charming Scoundrel that much, so I'll do that. Oh, Skyclave came back. So Leo and Grist, neither of those came back. So it's Get Lost versus Skyclave. The problem with Skyclave is that it's a bit harder to cast, but I think it's a much better card. So I'll sort of just take Skyclave here, I think. But Get Lost is also really good. There's also Oust and Touch the Spirit Realm. A lot of white cards here. Maybe maybe actually I do just take Get Lost. It's just going to be a bit easier to cast. Oh, there's Mother of Runes, but there's also Vindicate. And this looks like much more of a Vindicate deck. I'm kind of surprised Sahili's still there. All right. Oh, do I want Lotus Field? Actually, this could be a nice Golos deck, just five colors. There's also Cathar Commando, which is a solid card. We could be like a Jeskai-ish deck. There's also Burst Lightning. In fact, all these cards but Lumberjack are interesting to me. I don't really like Lumberjack, even though I guess I kind of have the colors for it. Yeah, I think... I think I'm just going to take Burst Lightning. I like Burst Lightning a lot. Oh, Chandra is Chandra's great because I like a Braid, but I just took two cheap Burn Spells and a Get Lost. So having more of a finisher seems great. All right, Dire Fleet Daredevil. First of all, it's very good against me. Second, I, I, I think that it's a good sideboard card. Do I want to pass Janar a last pick bowl? I think I'd rather take Staff because there is a chance I actually play Staff the Storyteller. And Citadel's a little bit narrow. This could be really helping him if he took the portal and is like a tinker deck, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. Oh, last pick, oust. All right. I mean, I, I kind of like where we're at here. And, oh, we're first picking a seasoned Dungeoneer. I mean, I do like Mana Leak. And also, Delayed Blast Fireball is a funny one. So, three-minute instant deals two to each opponent and each of their creatures. But if you foretell it for six mana, it does five to each opponent and all their creatures. Uh, I'm going to take Dungeoneer. I would love to get a Ketria Triumph because I still want some duels and stuff. There's also a Volcanic here. But I think, I mean, Mana Leak's definitely going to be gone. My bet is Mana Leak, Narset, the lands, and something else. But I think Seasoned Dungeoneer is still what I want. Oh, and then Ragavan versus Fourth Year Lingus. Wow. So I don't think Slax is playing white. And I think this is a much better Ragavan deck. I have all this cheap interaction to go with Raghavan, though that's also good with fourth year lingus those are they're both great cards i think slacks is less likely to be able to play fourth year lingus but that's not that big of a tiebreaker it's mostly i think Raghavan's going to be better in this deck but that's a close one in here oh here we have oko there's also plateau and trop and i still do need to pick up some of those duels but with Season Pyro, Dothy Voidwalker, Shield Resedict, Brainstorm all in the pack, I feel pretty good about getting uh, getting something back here. So I'm going to take Oko and hopefully hopefully one of these lands wheels. I actually don't really care too much which one. What do we got here? Oh, easy Spell Pierce here. Spell Pierce is just great. It's a good way to turn mana into, or like one mana into a pretty significant tempo advantage. And I've got a bunch of anti-creature spells, so having an anti-spell spell is pretty good. Nothing else here is actually very close. So I don't really anticipate wheeling much. It would be really great, this pick four, to pick to round out this pack with a couple dual lands. Or if that one of the duels wheels from uh, the pack where I took Oko. Spell Pierce also good against the fourth year Lingus I passed Lex. Uh, this pack, I'm not really into Time Warp that much. I mean, it's good with Dungeoneer, Oko... Chandra, it's, just, it's good with all the re recursive effects, but I don't really want to take a five mana spell. I might just take Gitaxian Probe. Probe is good. It's good if you flip it off Chandra. It's good at letting you know what you should be doing. And I think it's just a strong card. There's also Bone Crusher and Embrace Shield Breaker and Creeping Tar Pit, but if one of those comes back, oh, I guess I'll be happy enough. This was a pack where I would have liked to take a land. Now, oh wow, there's Inti and Jace. Jace looks pretty great here, but then again, so does Inti. Just having a, a, a good two-drop here to play. I think I'm going to take Inti and maybe Endotha Triumph wheels, but I'm not holding my breath on that. Loran did wheel alongside Borrower and Odonto Vanguard. I think I like Loran here. Loran's just a really solid card. Okay, so I, I've ended up basically being Jeskai, Splash Oko, maybe Vindicate. We'll see what lands we get. Pack three, we're going to have to start taking lands a little bit higher just because so far we haven't gotten any. Um, 
Phantasmal Image is very good with Dungeoneer. It's good with Spellbinder. The rest of my creatures are Legends. Rafelos, I don't care too much about that. I'll take a white red Talisman. I, I could certainly play that. I've got two good fours, and I've got some good single red white cards to cast. All right, Plateau's fantastic. So Plateau now all of a sudden makes Flooded Strand into red, Wooded Foothills into white. So huge pickup there. This pack still doesn't have much. I guess I'll take Usher because there's a chance I play that. I don't think I'm that into playing Unexpectedly Absent here. Still could use... So these two fetches are have gotten a lot better. Still could use Delta and Verdant support here. I will take Voice. There's some matchups where Voice could be good. I don't think Embreath Shieldbreaker... I'm going to feel like I'm missing out on too much by not taking that. I have a Loran, a Vindicate... I'll get lost, so. Okay, Blood Tithe Harvester versus Sarah Paragon. Sarah Paragon actually looks kind of nice with all those fetches and some really strong cheaper cards, so I'll take that. I'll take the Adonto Vanguard now. I'll hate the, the Ashen Rider. I don't think I'm playing Fire Blast. I, I don't think I am. Yeah, I'm just going to take Ashen Rider there. All right. Could use some more duels. Could use a little bit more like in the Warrior Realm of Counterspells, but I guess I have Spell Pierce and Memory Lapse. That's actually not bad. Obviously, a piece of power would be nice. It always is. Uh, what do we got? Not too thrilled with this. This is all just fine cards. So now it's like, do I take Miscalculation? Do I take Ponder? Do I take Fire Covenant? Taiga, Savai Triumph? Thalia, Carnosaur. I don't think I'm going to take Thalia. I think I would play Thalia. It's, it's a strong card, even with a lot of spells in your deck. But I don't think I feel like after pack one, Skyclave Apparition Wheeling and stuff, I don't need to, to take it, though I kind of wish I took Skyclave over Get Lost the way my decks turned out. I do like Ponder a lot with all these fetches, so I might just ponder and see what wheels. Ponder does make you a little bit more consistent. I think this Voice of Resurgence, I'm probably not gonna start. There's also Miscalculation, which is a fine card, but I think Ponder's a little bit better. Alright, now I'm probably gonna take Remand and hope. Yeah, one of these lands almost has to table because there's a currency converter. Well, there's not actually much else besides a currency converter, but I'm still taking Remand. <laughs> I mean, maybe I'll get Giver of Runes back if one of the lands doesn't come back, but I kind of feel like one of the lands is going to, though I guess Sacred Foundry is not the highest on my list. All right, what do we got hiding under there? Oh, it's a Hell Rider. Sure, I'll take Reprieve, and I guess I'm glad I took Ponder over Miscalc because I'll take Reprieve here and... Be happy if I get back like a Thraven Inspector or a Sylvan Library. Okay, there's a Savannah. So Savannah makes Wooded Foothills into white. It already is. It makes Flooded Strand into green. And it makes Verdant into white. That's pretty good. I think I'll take Savannah over Sylvan Caryatid. And then one more pick. Tundra. Tundra's got to be great, right? Yeah, because Tundra makes Delta into white. Well, I guess it only works with Delta, but it's also a blue-white land, which is very strong for me. So I'm going to take that over Luminarch. I think I've got plenty of playables, and I would rather Luminarch comes back than Blade Splicer, but I'd be shocked if one of the two didn't come back. And now there's a black-white land, which makes Verdant into white. Well, no, Verdant's already white. It makes Flooded Strand into black. Currently, we just have Vindicate. It makes Polluted Delta into white, though Polluted Delta's already white because of Tundra. Okay, so it would be fine, but there's also just take Flame Tongue or Virtue, or actually this could be a sick Grim Lava Mancer deck. Four fetch lands and a bunch of cantrips. All right, I'm going to take, well, no, I'm going to take Flame Tongue because Grim might come back. It might not, but less decks can play Grim. All right, Thalia came back. So did Fire Covenant. So did Taiga and Savai Triumph. Okay, I'm going to try to float the Thalia again. I think I can do that. Savai Triumph makes... Wooded into black, white. It's already white, but it wouldn't have been black. Makes flooded into red. I mean, I have a pretty good set of duels, but I think Savai Triumph's still probably going to make my mana a pretty good bit better. There's also Taiga, which makes Verdant into red, which it's not yet, and it doesn't help with Wooded. But Savai Triumph also makes Verdant into red. These are both green. All right, I'm going to go with the Savai Triumph here. And I think I might still get something back. Now there's Jetmere's Gardens there over Giver of Runes. Yeah, I will do that. Okay, and now my mana I think is totally fine. Having two Triumphs and three Duels means that 
I should be fine. In fact, I don't even think I need this talisman. And then right now I have 17 lands plus the rest spells. I'm going to play the Vindicate probably. So Thraven Inspector didn't come back. But Hellrider and Hero of Bladehold did, and Archangel Elspeth. Um, I've got a bunch of fours, so I don't really care about another four. I even have Chandra. I guess I'll take Hero. I think it's like... Is that the best one? Maybe maybe, maybe the Archangel, like I would side that in in some cases. I don't know. I'll take another green-white land, I think. I don't think I'm going to play Cosmic Rebirth. But I would play another green-white land to make sure I can cast this Oko. It also makes Voice of Resurgence potentially a playable if I want to put that in. Okay, and Luminar came back and Blades Placer didn't? I'm like a little suspicious about how that came to be. I don't know. I'll take Virtue of Loyalty as well. All right. I mean, I, I like where this ended up. I think... I think just basically red-white threats splashing blue counters and then Oko kind of for free and then Vindicate... Because I think I could also not play the Vindicate. I mean, Savai Triumph I think is still fine because it gets fetched off Delta and Verdant. But I could not play a Swamp and not play Vindicate. And I think I would be totally fine here. I have like Get Lost. I have a bunch of counters. I, I feel like this could work out just okay. And because right now this is 16 lands. I need to cut one more anyway. Not sure which of these it's going to be. Thalia came back and so did Fire Covenant. I, I think I think I'm going to take Thalia. The fact that no one is playing White Weenie does make White Weenie cards a little bit better, I think. Actually, I think I'll hate High Tide over Elspeth. And there's a Rampaging Raptor I could side in if I wanted to. All right, let's get to deck building. i got a couple cuts to make here. And by a couple cuts, I really just have to make one. I, I mean, I guess I did cut a Virtue of Loyalty. But this is... This is 16 lands. I mean, it wouldn't be crazy to play 16 because I have Probe and Ponder. And I guess Raghavan. Oh, part of the reason I also took Flame Tongue over Burst Lightning is I think Flame Tongue would be better against me. And I, or sorry, Flame Tongue over Grim Lava Mancer is that I already have Firebolt and Burst Lightning, and those make a kind of good Grim imitation anyway. I could also take Usher of the Fallen out. I do kind of like Usher. It's good with Inti as having a one drop to get in there. I guess having cheap cards for iteration is good. It's that or take out one of the expensive cards or play 16 lands. I guess none of my lands do anything special. Let's see. And mana wise, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. No, Delta does not get green. Uh, Flooded Strand does though. All right, so I got Plenty of green fixing. I mean, I think my mana is actually going to be pretty great. Let's just check red. One, two. Does Delta get red? It does. It does. So I try it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven red without adding a single mountain. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten white without adding a single planes. That's awesome. And what about blue? Wooded does not get blue. I think that's true. Yeah, but Flooded does, Delta does, Tundra. Verdant also does not get blue. So I, I'm going to need a decent amount of islands here. So let's let's see. So I'm going to want to put in like three islands. That gives me three, five, six. I kind of want one more, man. I guess I just have all the non-blue duels. So I'm going to have an island plus a bunch of duels out. <laughs> uh Plains, mountain, I don't need a forest. Mm, don't really need, I mean, I have a bunch of other sources because right now that's 11 white and one, two, six, seven, eight red. Mm, I could go nine red. Yeah, and that would be 17 lands. Maybe I just cut Usher of the Fallen. Go like this, all right. This seems like a deck to me. I, I think this actually ended up working out all right. Didn't open anything fantastic, but this is... I really like these, like, multicolor aggressive decks that have some counters. I, I've typically done well with these. Wheeling uh, Luminarch was also great. Oh, also, maybe Odonto Vanguard's worse than Usher, actually. Usher is a one-mana 
threat. All right, let's let's do that. Oh, you know what? Actually, I should also probably have virtue in because I have a bunch of counter spells. So having a an instant speed threat that I can keep up mana for a counter spell and cast virtue sounds pretty good. Maybe I do just cut a land and just play sixteen with a bunch of cantrips and a curve that it's got some fours and threes, but mostly ones and twos with probe ponder iteration and then cantrip roman cantrip yeah all right we'll, we'll, we'll try this all right it's time for round one against mac and uh my teammates haven't even finished building so i will show you their decks and a little sneak preview uh mo money has a a black lotus a mox jet and a mana crypt so i do like that uh i'm gonna keep this look at this hand turn on ragavan turn two thalia turn three oka <laughs> i guess i could also turn one ragavan turn two oka depending all right but either way let's start with Ragavizzle and see Mac Mulligan to let's see what his two drop is. Probably killing Ragavan. Uh, kind of is. Um, yeah, let's go Thalia then. And then I can Elite Spellbinder next turn and Oko the turn after despite the Thalia. Graveyard Trespasser. Okie dokie. Uh, do I want to sack a fetch? I don't really need to, so let's just go Elite Spellbinder here. Shieldred's Edict, Shieldred the Apocalypse, and Witherbloom Command. Mm, I guess Shieldred the Apocalypse is the card that I'm going to make more expensive. Needed to be on the play to get a Ragavan hit in this game, sadly. Thalia's still doing okay here. Mac can kill it with Witherbloom, but then, or kill Elite Spellbinder but then needs to do some milling in order to get something back. So Witherbloom, he did mill a land. So he's gonna kill that and get a, get a forest. Past the turn. Oh, I like Sarah Paragon. Why don't I just cast that? Let's get Savannah here. And then cast Sarah Paragon. And pass the turn. Pretty much protected from Shieldred's Edict. Mech has the ability to play Shieldred if he taps out here. Yeah. Okay, he's got a Shieldred's Edict in hand. So now I think I'm going to go... Thalia's actually being a little annoying here, but that's fine. We're going to go Flooded Strand. Oko is going to get hit by the Edict most likely, but... I'm going to make Shieldred into a dork and pass the turn. I don't think I want to attack with the Paragon. Mac will spend three mana casting Shieldred's Edict to make me sack Oko, but then I can just replay Oko if I want. And the Sarah Paragons is doing some good work. All right, what's your last card? Terra Sunder on my Sarah Paragon? Oh. All right, I was hoping for a slightly easier value there oh okay interesting i guess you have one card left it's shieldred's edict i could double block here i think i'm just gonna let oko die alternately i could double block lose both my creatures and kill the graveyard trespasser that makes my virtue a little worse but it also makes it a little easier to cast no I think I'm going to let that happen. That's fine. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to sack Flooded Strand, gain my two life. Well, one life, I guess. Get Savai Trium, draw. Oh. I guess if I had known I was drawing that, I might have played things a little differently. But what I can do here, crack this. I'm just going to get a mountain. And then just cast Virtue of Loyalty. This untaps all my creatures too, right? The hardcast virtue seems actually pretty good here. I get to hit for two as well. But now what this does is Thalia can block and take down anything that uh, Mac attacks with because she's a 3-2 first strike. Shieldred's Edict can make me sack Ragavan, but that's not that big of a deal. Next turn I can play Chandra and ping something. I think just Virtue looks really good right here. I hope Mac doesn't draw an answer to it. Okay, I sack a non-token creature. I mean, at this point, I sack Ragavan. 
because Dahlia is doing the work. And draw. I have used a bunch of fetches and I have this ponder. It is funny that how much Thalia is actually impacting me, but I think that's still fine because it is just valuable that I uh, <laughs> they, they have a, a first striker. Okay, I'm going to nug Shieldred. And I'm doing that now so I can attack and then untap Thalia and have a 4-3 first strike blocker. If Mac has another removal spell, he gets to kill Thalia and kill Chandra, but then next turn I get to cast both my cantrips, and that's also pretty good. All right, Trespasser is going to get Swole here. Oops, I didn't mean to go straight to attacks, but that's fine. We'll do that. All right, let's start with Iteration, or do I start by... I think I'm going to add mana with Chandra. I can see so many cards here, but let's just start by, by doing this. I uh, guess I'll put Lauren in my hand and Exile Island. Then I'll cast Ponder. Oh, that I do like. All right, so let's go. No, land, then play Seasoned Dungeoneer here. Get to explore. The, the Graveyard Glutton is going to turn back into a, a werewolf. And then end of turn, Virtue of Loyalty pumps up the squad and... I think this is going to be pretty hard for Mac to, to come back from. In fact, he does not. All right, playing against green-black mid. That kind of makes me want Archangel Elspeth and Dire Fleet Daredevil. Usher of the Fallen can get out. Oust, I think, is okay, but not amazing. Spell Pierce looked kind of bad, too. He had a lot of creatures. All right, let's try this. All right, on the draw... <laughs> I mean, I, I will keep this hand. It is kind of funny. Classic Thalia. Can't play Oko. Mm, I'm just going to fire off Ponder. See if I can get some good value. Burst Lightning, Loran. No. I will regret it if if he plays a turn two Dothy Voidwalker. And I wish I had the Burst Lightning. But Okay, so if Mac doesn't play anything here, well, I guess he is going to play something. Oh, Phyrexian Revoker. Probably going to name Oko. I'm probably just going to play Thalia here. Like, <laughs> I did name Oko. I feel like uh, Thalia might mess him up. And it's a decent first striker. He also might just spend three mana to kill it, which I would be okay with. Yeah, cut down. Spent two mana to kill it. But drawing Plateau is nice because now I can cast Iteration. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, I'll still cast Iteration. I think it's, it's it's worth doing. Okay, so now I think I would rather have a Dungeoneer, and then I'll play a Savannah as my land. So I didn't leave up get lost or uh, Remand that turn, but I feel like I can get lost a lot of Max plays and then leave up Remand later. Oh, is he just gonna do nothing? No, he's got a Shieldred. Okay, um, I think on. Upkeep, I am going to get lost the Shieldred here. I just don't really want to take a bunch of damage and play an island and pass. <clears throat> I don't get to play Dungeoneer yet, but I didn't really want to play Dungeoneer into Shieldred anyway. That didn't make so too much sense. Here, get lost is a little worse than Apparition. Oh, well, I'll remand that. Now I'm in a little bit of trouble. Oh, another land. Eesh. Okay, Raghavan is a start. Let's go Raghavan dash. Maybe I'll hit something sick to play. What would we get? Grave Titan. Well, that would have been sick. Uh, let's go Mountain Dungeoneer. And it's, I know that he's going to be able to steal initiative back here. I have one basic left in my deck. Yeah, I've drawn a good amount of lands here. But, okay, he hit a land. Now he can go Oddity if he wants, or he can kill the Dungeoneer. His Asika's Chariot. Okay. So he's got to have a two-mana kill spell. There's no way he doesn't if instead of playing Oddity here. Oh, Liliana, sure. Okay, so I lose the Dungeoneer. 
and then you take initiative, but then now I get to Raghavan and take initiative back. I don't really care about the Liliana right now, so let's dash this. Okay. Wait, you left the chariot on top? Okay, that's uh, a little odd. All right, bottom, and I think I'll actually keep the virtue. And Oh, he didn't leave the chariot on top. What happened? I thought he revealed Masika's chariot to... Oh, he shuffled with that. Okay, okay. That makes a lot more sense. Um, let's play that. And I'll play my land because I think I'm going to cycle the Savai Triumph. It doesn't really make sense to play the Oko, given that Revoker is naming Oko. Okay, I'll discard an island here. And you can play Olvenwald, but then you have to attack with both. Oh, no, you don't, because this is Trample. So I guess he can leave back the Revoker. No, oh, I'm just going to bash with everything, huh? Um, sure, I'll take it. I'll go to seven. Or go to, take seven, go to four. You get to go to get a Forge. I mean, I'm probably losing this game, but I don't think blocking with Karyatid really does a whole lot for me. All right, I need to draw a way to deal with the oddity. And I need Mac not to have another play this turn. Oh, my God. All right, well, let's cycle this. I knew. I guess I knew I was drawing Virtue. Chandra doesn't quite kill the oddity. I can Chandra. I can Oko. No. We are done here. We just got too far behind, and, uh, yeah, I never really had a way to... To kind of get leverage there. Do I want voice? Voice against the all removal deck seems like it's kind of nice. And Loran seems like it doesn't have. Oh, it says Revoker and Chariot. No, that's probably enough to leave it in. I mean, I could take out Thalia. It's not unreasonable. It also dies to Witherbloom Command. All right. Yeah, we will we'll try this. On the play now, let's just lead on Ragavon. <laughs> Any Ragavons? Uh, no, but this is. Fine. So I don't get blue mana out of uh, Verdant Catacombs, unfortunately. But other than, other than that, I, I don't mind this hand. Mana Vault. Okay. That's not too bad. Let's get uh, Jetmere's Garden here. Draw blue. Oh, yeah. And then pass, and now remand against Mana Vault is fantastic. Get Lost could also be good. If they, like, if Mac Mana Vaults out a, a big thing and I kill it with Get Lost, that's good. Though obviously remand is kind of where I want to be here. Mac's going to be worried about that, but we'll see what he can do about it. Sylvan Library. Uh, I think I'm just going to Get Lost that. Boom. And then I'm going to play my Savai Trium, or actually, I think I'd rather cycle it. Because especially when I play this Dungeoneer, I'm going to get another uh, another land. So this seems fine. Graveyard Trespasser. All right, I will remand that. All right, you didn't use your Mana Vault. Congrats. Um, let's draw, not land. Memory Lapse isn't bad, but I think I'm still going to want Dungeoneer first. Let's get Plateau. Yeah. I'm seasoned engineer. I'll go get an island. Mm -hmm. And then pass. And then what I'm hoping happens here is Mac doesn't play Grave Titan. That would be bad. But other than Grave Titan, uh, Sika's Chariot. Chariot's okay. And then not Liliana, please. Just play a graveyard trespasser or something. That would that would also be acceptable. Basically, I would like to be in a place where I can uh, attack and then use memory lapse to some kind of advantage. All right, draw. Let's. We're just gonna go into the forge here. We're all in on on this dungeoneer, I believe. All right, spell. Oh, snuff out. All right. Well, I'm gonna memory lapse the snuff out. Mm, that's not that's not good let's hit with this draw temple garden oh my god 
Well, if I draw all lands, I will lose, and that is what happened. <laughs> like, I mean, I kept Dungeoneer, Get Lost, Dire Fleet, and so far I've drawn a Memory Lapse in five lands. Four lands, I guess, because this thing didn't... Uh, this thing found a land. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't have a way to stop that. I get to cast Dire Fleet Daredevil. I could I could cast it by paying life if I uh, if I wanted to. I believe yeah you can exile it you can cast it this turn yeah. I would need a swamp in play but I have a survive triumph but I'm also gonna cycle the survive triumph so. All right spell. Mm, okay. These are the start of things, but not good enough, I don't think. Snuff out. The fact that Mac, basically what went wrong is Mac had Mana Vault to cast a four drop plus a three drop plus a snuff out all on turn four. He spent basically like nine-ish mana on turn four counting snuff out as kind of like a two mana play. And I didn't, I spent four mana on turn four. He spent nine. So that is gonna be that, I think. Like I can play Dire Fleet and kill one thing. I can Chandra one thing. I mean, I guess what I can do is go Chandra minus three on this, discard a land, and then Dire Fleet and pass the turn. And then I'm at 10. Yeah, okay, I'm dead. All right, unfortunate round one. Let's see how my teammates are doing. All right, my steam teammates are still playing. Connor's on the Lotus, Mana Crypt, Mox, Jet, Urza, no Academy, but, you know, tons of artifacts, Miscalc, Psy, Narset, Leovold, big stuff. This deck looks great and has tons of power. Uh, Updraft is on Grixis, Reanimator with Atroxa, Trumpet, and Carnosaur, Exarch, Kiki, Reanimate, Shallow Grave, Corpse Dance. All right, this looks like pretty solid too. Hopefully they can uh, get some dubs. A good mana here too. Volcanic, Xander's Lounge, Steam Vent, Spiral Bluff, Badlands. So, all right, I like it. Especially since I'm 0-1, could use some help from my teammates. All right, time for round two. I would like to play first. Oh, let's see here. All right, after mulligan that, I will keep this hand and put back... I guess I'll put back an island. I don't really have a ton of use for double blue. And I do have du definitely double red. And I don't think I actually have that much use for double white either. But I think this works out. Mm. So we're down to three. <laughs> I, I, I did suspect this was going to be an uphill battle. But we can still rally. It's time to go five and two from here on out. Or five and one from here on out, actually, and uh, see if we can take down this draft. I I thought that my match against Mac was close, but it all did ultimately come down to him having uh, some good efficient turns. Unfortunately, all right, let's cast Thalia, and now I need to draw just a little more action, an elite spellbinder, perhaps uh, potentially a counter spell. Lauren of the Third Path. Um, do I want to play that? Slax does not have... No. I, I kind of want to wait on Lauren. So the main reason is Slax has both Coalition... Well, he's got Coalition Relic and Blade Splicer. Hmm. No, I kind of need to play this. I feel like using uh, using my mana is pretty important. And with Athalia out, the uh, card draw from Lauren I think is pretty solid. Gonna be a little annoyed if he just plays a Blade Splicer here, but what can you do? And he can't play Coalition Relic here because of Thalia, so I could rule that out. Hoping... Well, there we go. <laughs> uh, let's both draw, I guess. Raghavan is, I guess, something I'll cast and pass with Get Lost Up. I could kill the Golem and attack. 
Yeah, I guess I do that. It's kind of weak, but I, I think I still have to just do something here. And past the turn, this Ragavan is getting kind of owned by the Blade Splicer, even if uh, even if I had Lorand the Golem. Okay, four mana here. What is my best draw? Chandra would be pretty good. Palace Jailer eating probably Thalia. Yeah. All right. T time to draw some action. All right, let's both draw action, shall we? Well, hopefully I draw action and you don't, but I'm gonna use the lore in here because I need to make a play this turn or this isn't just not going anywhere. Hopefully we can draw, I don't even really know what, Seasoned Dungeoneer I guess would be pretty high on my list of things that would be good here. Memory lapse, huh? Well, that's not going to do it, but I guess I'll pass because every rock, every creature I have back makes it harder for uh, Jesse to make attacks here, given that he wants to keep the monarchy. But, I mean, I guess the best case scenario is he, like, makes an attack and then post-combat plays a creature and I memory lapse it. Let's see. Hopefully he does attack first. Uh, I have to memory lapse to fairy because... Teferi, of course, blanks the memory lapse. Okay. He now knows Teferi's on top, so his map tokens would give plus one, plus one, but that's it. All right. Probe. Well, at least I can see what I'm up against. <laughs> I suspect it's not going to be pretty. Let's see. Uh, I'm really going to do something in response to Probe? I mean, most most likely what's going to happen is I'm going to draw my land and then concede here, but we'll we'll see if uh, if this hand looks beatable. Teferi, Jite, Ephemerate, Mana Leak, Spell Queller. Yeah, no. No thanks. I will keep Lauren in. Oust? Oust just seems okay. Spell Pierce, <clears throat> I don't like it that much here. I don't think Dire Fleet looks that good either. Adanto Vanguard actually looks like it could be a little better, and then maybe Rampaging Raptor can attack that Teferi. I can maybe take Usher of the Fallen out. All right, let's try this. All right, I would like to play first, and I'll keep this hand. I'm going to get Jetmir's Garden on turn one, and then turn two, Virtue, turn three, Spellbinder, and <clears throat> turn four, hopefully play one of these Four drops. This is a this totally totally solid hand on the play. And as we're watching this deck play out, uh, yeah, I had a couple of games where I ended up a little light action light on action, which you know that's just I think kind of bad luck. I have like iteration. I have ponder, and you know the, it's not too much to ask to to draw like a a normal mix of lands and spells. But on the other hand, this deck's not capable of having a broken opening hand. The best it can do is, I guess, turn on Raghavan, turn two Thalia on the play. Or if, like, turn on Raghavan, turn two Oko if you hit with Raghavan, sure. Most of my, my hands involving Raghavan can be busted, but I don't have, I don't even have, like, a Daze or a Force of Will. You know, Mac had that snuff out that was pretty brutal. Like, imagine that game without the snuff out where he, like, plays Chariot, I play Dungeon, or I play Dungeoneer, he plays Chariot, I hit, play a creature, say go, and then memory lapse his next play that would have been a game instead the snuff out just completely savaged me so basically what i'm saying is i think that this deck is an okay fair deck but it's going to be it's going to struggle uh having not having in the option of having any broken hands or ways to save mana means that sometimes you're just going to run into games where you can't really get ahead this game spellbinder and flame tongue both kind of help with that so hopefully one of those will get the job done. All right, um, turn two, I'm just gonna play my island and pass. Savai Triumph was not an ideal draw because <laughs> it doesn't help me curve out, but also uh, isn't a spell, though I, I do get to cycle it, I suppose, at some point. All right, cast uh, Ardenvale Fealty here. See if I get mana leaked. 
Looks like I'm getting counterspelled or mana leaked or something. That's fine. Because now I get to resolve a spellbinder. Alright, what do you got? No lands. Interesting. And a really powerful hand. Uh, I think I take Phantasmal Image. Because it's the only spell you could cast. Though, yeah, maybe I don't. Because, like, what are you going to Phantasmal Image the Flame Tongue? And then I can cast Raptor still. I think I'm just going to take Mind Twist, actually. Mind Twist is the one that will mess me up the most if Jesse draws a land. I don't really want to count on him not drawing a land. Yeah, you can Phantasmal Image. That's that's fine. Because I can kill the the opposing Spellbinder for one mana. And making my Flame Tongue cost more is a little annoying. A Raptor, I guess. Sure. But it's really not the end of the world. And then here... What am I going to do? He didn't play a land. Um, I think I am going to Flame Tongue. Boom. And then hit. And then if you draw a land, you can play a Blade Splicer, I suppose. And if not, Swift Reconfiguration. Okay, okay. So let's go attack here. I guess I'm going to get my Flame Tongue swiftly reconfigured. Sure. And I'm just going to cast or play Savai Triumph because it means I guarantee you get to play a Raptor next turn. And uh, that's obviously pretty enticing. Uh, let's just play this. If he's got another counter spell, then he's got another counter spell. All right. It does not. And we're going to we're going to win this game pretty easily. I mean, Jesse got stuck on two lands. That, that pretty much does it. He can cast Blade Splicer and still basically die. Okay, because now attack with both and yeah, just burst lightning you, whatever. Uh, do I want spell pierce now that I've seen mind twist as well and there's mana leak and counter spell? Maybe, maybe on the draw I wouldn't mind that. And maybe I take out firebolt or oust. Firebolt seems just kind of mid. All right, I will try that. All right, game three on the draw here. Let's see. Any Raghavans? No. And unfortunately, I have to mulligan this hand. It's close, but that hand doesn't do it. All right, I will keep this hand. And I think I'm going to put the Thalia back. I'm going to go... Raghavan into some cantrips and a flame tongue is kind of my my plan here. An untapped red, of course, would be kind of nice, but even if I don't get that, I still have turn one land, turn two, uh, dashed Raghavan if if that's appropriate, or ponder, or just cast Raghavan plus ponder, some some combination of those things. All right, Sarah Paragon, not an ideal draw. Gives me something to do if I find more mana, though. Okay. Oh, I think I just cast Raghavan here. Spell Pierce was a great draw. I'll Spell Pierce a Mana Leak or Spell Pierce a 3-drop here. Let's really hope that Jesse's turn 3 is Coalition Relic or something. Snapcaster Mage, yeah. Okay, that does stop Raghavan, but I can stop a Teferi or Coalition Relic, yeah. Spell Pierce is great. And then now I get to iteration to find a removal spell for Snapcaster, maybe, or at least just lands. Yeah, I think I'll start with iteration over ponder. I even have a red land. Oh, oust, yes. So let's go island in hand, exile oust, play my wooded foothills, get my plateau. Yeah, it's got to be plateau here. Oust to the Snapcaster. Hit with Raghavan. Now, now Jesse. Oh, I hit a Mox off it. <laughs> oh, you love to see that. All right. Well, maybe I do get to play with a Mox. So he drew Snapcaster now, which, you know, that's that's fine. That can potentially block. Let's see if I can find an instant speed interaction. Oh, there's Memory Lapse. Oh, Memory Lapse actually sounds awesome. So let's go attack with Raghavan. 
I can even pay for mana leak if he's got it. But I get to memory lap Snapcaster, hit Snapcaster, and then Snapcaster uh, if I want here. All right, let's go memory lapse. And this is just the Ragavan show right here. Also, citing that, that spell pierce back in worked out so well. All right, hit. So now, yeah, let's go Snapcaster. Cast Expressive Iteration and I think I'll cast it and and not play a land yet. All right, Seasoned Dungeoneer in hand, bottom, and then play a Tapped Savai Trium. All right, well now now we're <laughs> we're, we're cruising because now if Jesse plays a creature, I can Flame Tongue it. He has to do something about the Ragavan. I'm up on mana. Phantasmal image, make a monkey. Okay. Um, I'm kind of worried about Spell Queller. Spell Queller would be really annoying. Let's start by casting Ponder. Okay, let's go Island, Delta, Remand. I'm gonna keep it even though this doesn't actually help my Spell Queller issue. I think I'm gonna play Sarah Paragon to start with. Oh, we just didn't have the spell queller. Okay, well, that's fine. And I'll attack with Snapcaster. I'll leave my Ragavan back, I think. And then I can shuffle too. I don't really want to draw Pluto Delta. Basically, I didn't want Flame Tongue or Dungeoneer to get spell quellered if that's what he had. And if he didn't have spell queller, then I'm not that worried. I think I'm still going to win off of getting Paragon into play. He's trading. Okay into Thraben, sure. Cracking the clue right away, I like to see that. All right, now I think we're, I think we're doing great. Right, could this be the start of a comeback? Let's see, let's crack this, gain two life. What do I have left to get with Wooded Foothills? I don't think I have much. I think I have a mountain to get and a savanna. And if you wanna kill something here, now is the time before I draw and uh, or untap with a counter spell up. Next turn I get to slam one of my, uh, I guess I'll get a mountain, one of my threats with remand up. I'm just trying to decide which one. I think I'm just gonna attack with Paragon and Ragavan, because then next turn, if he trades, then I can just cast the Ragavan with the Sarah Paragon, play Seasoned Engineer and still have remand up in case he's got something on his turn. Not that there's too much that really gets me, I guess like a sweeper of some kind would be what I'm scared of. But other than that, I feel like we're in pretty good shape here. All right, so I think we start by playing a land. I could play Elite Spellbinder first, but I don't think his hand is gonna be all that good. So it doesn't, it doesn't seem bad just to do this first. Assume you block. Oh, and then ephemerate the Thraben Inspector. Sure, that, that that I guess means I don't get Sarah Paragon value. That's fine. Uh, let's actually Elite Spellbinder now. See what your last card is. Could be Mana Leak. No, it's Island. And then let's play the Dungeoneer. And go get up Plains, I guess. Or I guess I could get another island. I have, yeah, I have four white already. All right. Well, I think this game is looking pretty fantastic. Jesse's going to get to draw a card end of turn. And then Ephemerate's going to ca get cast on the <laughs> three-bit inspector again. And he's going to get to draw another card. But... The second card is going to cost mana. The, the first one is effectively free because he doesn't have anything else to do. Now it's like you got one new card plus a card from your draw step. Plus you can spend two mana to draw another card. But you have like a ton of threats in play that are pretty savage. So I expect Jesse to, to likely concede next here. And boom. One and one. Let's get to round three. Maybe we can turn the ship around. All right, we're going to do a live look in. Janara is going to be my next opponent. And this is a live look in on people with power because Janara has Soaring and uh, Connor's got Mana Crypt. Though it looks like Connor mulliganed a bunch this game. Let me see. 
I guess it only shows from when I started watching, but Connor has eight cards on turn three. So on the play, seven, eight, nine. Oh, just mold once. Mold once and played all, all the cards. I guess it looks like it's later in the game than it is because both players have five permanents in play, six permanents in play. Well, if Connor has nothing better to do, then does get to like pump Ballista, hit for four, and then shoot the Devoted Druid, I guess. And Janara only has two cards in hand. Uh, five, six, seven. So it means on turn two, Janara mold to five and Connor mold to six. Okay, okay. They're keeping things even. Let's see uh, Let's see how this plays out here. But uh, let's just say I'm not going to have a great time competing against a Sol Ring if it comes out early enough. Hopefully uh, that is not the case. But, you know, Raghavan, Raghavan can conquer all. Oh, interesting. He just killed the Devoted Druid Blist and then, oh, and just casts Worm Coil. Worm Coil I've, I've found to be extremely weak in general. And Connor cast it both rounds uh, or both games against Slacks round one and still lost because Worm Coil is just bad. But where it could shine is against Red Green. And, you know, Janara might not have good answers to it. A memory jar. Okay. But you do, Janara is about to get hit down to seven here. So if Connor draws something good this turn, then th this could be on. Ooh, we're tapping man. Is that a Nettle Cyst? Oh, Knight's Whisper. Oh, okay. I mean, that's pretty good. You got a lot of mana out. Into Nettle Cyst? Nettle Cyst would be, just be sick. Oh, Sigh. All right. Sigh is okay. Sigh into Lotus isn't terrible. Oh, we get to sack Mirror Retriever and uh, get back a Ballista at some point. It doesn't have to be right now. All right. This is going to be a big memory jar. Let's see what uh, Janara's got. End of turn crack jar. And end of turn is fine. It just lets you start your whole turn with all the jar cards. You can also crack on upkeep. It's the same thing. All right. Mox 2? Look at all these people. We're, we're, I guess I, it answers why me and uh, Updraft Elemental don't have any power. Jesse had a Mox. Connor has like Mox Mana Crypt Lotus. All right. Janara does have Kin in here. So still has a lot of mana. Let's see, hopefully no Basalt Monolith. Hopefully this isn't like a Fiery Confluence. But Psy is a pretty good threat. And uh, let's see, seven mana? All right, what are we casting here? Oh, Prime Time. Oh, that is that is not so bad. Because remember, Janara's hand is about to go away. Connor's is two, but... You know, there wasn't really much of an expectation that we cast stuff off that. And Connor's got a pretty good squad in play. Next turn, you can sack to Psy and cast a 4-4 Ballista. Assuming Strip Mine doesn't get used. Got Cradle and Triumph there. All right. Memory Jar discards a bunch of land. Connor discards a Portal and a, and a Currency Converter and a, and a Leobold in land. All right. So at the very least, you're you're definitely getting your worm coil engine chumped. So that's a start. And then, yeah, attacking with the mirror retriever is pretty good because that way you don't have to spend mana on Psy. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a five-five ballista, so we're like one short of winning. Oh, yeah. All right, this puts Janara down to five. So Connor can get back ballista. I mean, I think you pretty much have to because killing Kinnon is also pretty strong here because Kinnon gets, uh, adds an additional two mana just by virtue of pumping up Sol Ring and Mox, but also the ability could be threatening. So I think we're going to see a, see a Mirror Retriever plus like maybe the Talisman gets sacked if you tap the Talisman. Maybe a, I don't know if you actually want to sack Thopter Token, though it's reasonable to do so. You don't really need to sack the mana crypt you're at 20. Yeah, all right. So stop your tokens getting sacrificed. Ballista's coming back off Mirror Retriever. And then Psy is also drawing a card. So, you know, who knows? Connor could hit a good card too. So play a land, tap City of Traders. So you have three, four, five, six, nine mana. So you could make a 4-4 four, four Ballista if you have nothing else to do. 
or maybe a 3-3 Ballista and not sack the Lotus. Talisman, make a token. All right, then and then, may, then maybe sack Lotus and make a 4-4 Ballista. Yeah, I like that. And I think taking out Kinnon right away is good, even though, you know, you were very close to lethal, but you certainly have lethal next turn. So taking out Kinnon is perfect. And then pass. And it's on Gennaro's one card, plus the card he drew with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana. I mean, nine mana is a pretty good amount, but it's not enough to cast like an Emrakul or something. And being at five against a three, three, a three, three, two, one, one flyers, a one, four, and then a two, two that also can get pumped maybe twice if Connor draws a land. So could the comeback be happening? Uh, We'll see. Updraft Elemental won their round two. I won my round two. If Connor wins this, we're tied 3-3 going into round three and and the come or on the comeback trail. I mean, Gennaro's thinking here, but uh, there's just not... I mean, obviously there's a lot of cards he could have. He's any, any color of mana, nine mana total, but only two cards in hand. One of the cards he had last turn and decided to draw without playing it. So, seems like there's a Pretty slim chance that Gennaro gets to come back here. Boom, and there we go. Connor wins the match, and uh, we are on to the next round. All right, I am on the draw against Gennaro and hoping to, to not get soul ringed here. Well, I have turn on Raghavan, turn two Luminarch, seasoned engineer in hand. Certainly not going to mulligan this hand. Let's, uh, let's see how many zero mana or one mana artifacts my opponent starts with. All right, Noble Hierarch, that, that'll do, that'll do. Let's go Raghavan. Well, I like that less. All right, let's go Raghavan. I think I needed to be on the play to have a good shot this game. I mean, we'll see, but if I was on the play and played Raghavan and then had Luminarch or Remand, that would be a very different story. <laughs> sure. Uh, I think I'm going to play Luminarch. And I'm going to Luminarch my Luminarch and then attack with the Raghavan. No. No blocks, huh? All right, hit Wall of Roots. Pass. There's no point leaving up Roman because I just lose to Sneak anyway. Um, if he's got a Sneak target. And I have to try to get this game over with, so the Luminarch is a pretty big part of that. Now, if he's completely missed here, then sure, but I, I kind of don't feel that's the case. We'll see, we'll see. Turn turn to sneak with Kinnon, huh? Well, I, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, sneak away, I suppose. Um, okay, sneaking in a devoted druid isn't the worst. I guess that adds a mana, because this adds, no, it adds two mana, because you spent one mana to get four mana, so yeah, sure, it adds three mana. With Kinnon here. And maybe activating Kinnon? Okay, okay. Miss. That'd be nice. Hit Titania, but didn't have a thing. Okay. Had a had a sack line in hand, unfortunately, but getting a Titania in a 5-3 isn't the end of the world. Alright, let's see. I think Next turn, I'm just gonna. You're gonna attack for three, sure. I guess I could pump Raghavan to a 3 2 and attack with it. I think I'm going to do that. Let's see, this is a cleric. Wait, hold on. Attack, target attacking. Oh, maybe I just do that. Maybe I just play Seasoned Dungeoneer. And then get an island. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Raghavan, and then attack with this. And put revealed card in my graveyard. No, I actually do want to draw Oust, I think. Oust seems like a fine thing to draw. And then get hit for three. And then I actually have decent blockers. The Raghavan can block Titania. I could even block Titania with Seasoned Engineer if I wanted to. I'm still kind of at the mercy of Sneak Attack here, but that was true last turn. Could also activate, if Jannara has a land, he could activate Kinnan. 
because this taps for two and this taps for two. Currently, maybe he attacks with both. I think if he attacks with just the two five threes, I'll block both with my two creatures. But I guess we're gonna we're gonna see what happens first. Hard cast Golos probably get a cradle. I guess you could get a Sackland too if you wanted to optimize for Titania, but he didn't. He didn't sneak the Golos in. Which is interesting. All right, and Dotha Trium. Oh, and Stripmine. Stripmine's pretty. You know, wow, Stripmine's really annoying because he's got a Titanian play too. Oof. Okay. Um, I think I'm gonna keep my seasoned engineer alive. I think I do need this one. You can get the initiative back here. I'm drawing oust. I am going to attack, let's see, 15, put a counter on the Luminarch, I think, and attack with the Luminarch, and I'll keep Ponder on top as well, take 5, I'm going to go into Forge here, Forge. Put two counters on the Dungeoneer, land, and Golo. I guess I have to oust Golos, play a land, and pass. So, which means I don't have lethal next turn, unfortunately, but I do have a remand up, and I can bounce, or I can, the Dungeoneer can block nicely. Basalt Monolith. Um, so does remanding that help? I guess it kind of does. Uh, so you drew Basalt Monolith to go with the Kinan. I hope that's not bad for me. <laughs> it doesn't sound great for me, but this does mean he's not going to be able to go activate Kinan this turn. Oh, that's not true. He can tap the Noble for two. So yeah, he can play, he can play the uh, Basalt Monolith. Oh, he's not leaving the ability to activate Kinan up. Yeah, yeah, no, because this can tap for double blue or double green now, but it can't it can't actually add go to blue green. Okay. So that hits for six and he's at secret entrance. Um at thir he's at thirteen. So if I attack six this could be a seven block. I can ponder. I'm just thinking what happens. I guess I just do have to take it now. Go to six. You get two plus one plus one counters. Mm -hmm. Get to scry two. Your top card's Golos though, and I think Golos is already pretty good, so that doesn't bother me too much. All right, I'm gonna draw. What am I hoping to draw here? I guess burst lightning or. Um, Firebolt does the trick. Because right now I have five points of damage off trap. Remember that one. <laughs> I won't forget that one. Uh, at least six points of damage. So I have 11 points of damage. And if I hit on Explore, that's 12 points. But let's start with Ponder first. I uh, will shuffle. Wow. None of those are any good. Um, Let's put a plus one plus one counter on the dungeon ear. Attack. Put the revealed card in my graveyard. Yeah, I guess so. Boom, I get the initiative. Trap you down to one. Unfortunately, I just have this and Island go. So I'm like, oh, he went to Lost Well. I'm not getting trapped. Okay, so I'm not just dead, though. Obviously, I assume I am dead here. I mean, he's going to get to at least Kinan twice. <laughs> so that's already enough. I think he should have been able to Kinan last turn, but I think it just didn't see that the Noble could double tap or couldn't double tap. But I, I assume this is probably going to be enough for me all right we're activating kin in here we've got to fade a couple whiffs or a couple hits here let's see all right that was number one <laughs> all right all right 
And now he gets to do it again. Let's see. Number two. What do you got? Dryad. Okay. Uh, that doesn't add two more flips, though. It just adds one. All right. We could maybe get get out of this. Let's see. You get to... You get to go again here. Okay. So this is looking at the top five. So the top 10 have had one dryad. And Golos doesn't do it anymore. Um, like sneaking into Golos doesn't help. I go to one. All right, let's see what you got. All right, we're activating Kinnan again. Let's see. Crater hoof? Anything? Cogla? That doesn't do it. Does it? Oh, wait. It does do it because now he sneaks in Golos. I block a 5 3. Oh, it doesn't even have to sneak in Golos. He just has. Oh, it doesn't kill the Dungeoneer, but it killed my. Luminar. So the, the, the thing is, at the start of the turn, I was so unlikely to win because he's going to get to Kinnan a bunch of times. But now that we got down to this point, it felt like we almost could win. But unfortunately, we are not going to. Okay, well, Jannar is spending a lot of time thinking. Uh, I'm just dead on board here. So if I had a removal spell, I would have used it. Um, don't want voice. Don't really want Dire Fleet Daredevil. I guess I kind of want Ram Rampaging Raptor, and I kind of don't want Usher. Archangel also seems kind of interesting, and Thalia seems kind of bad. He's just got a lot of creatures in his deck, so let's take out that and side in a four-drop spell and go from there. All right, I'm on the play. Okay. Uh, I don't really like going to five, obviously, but what am I going to do here? Just keep a one lander on the play against a strip mine deck. That doesn't sound ideal to me. So let's just go ahead and mulligan. Sure, I guess I'll keep. I'll put back a land. So let's see, I can get Jetmere's Garden with the Verdant. So I can put back a land, and I guess I'll put back Virtue. And I will just have Memory Lapse into Oko. I think that that's better than uh, having Virtue, but I don't know. Okay. Okay. Let's get Jetmere's Garden. Iteration's nice. That's a that's a nice one to play a little later. All right, and then let's. I was hoping not to have to use Memory Lapse this turn, but the Mox makes it pretty unlikely that there's nothing that Jannar's not playing anything. I'm not Memory Lapsing the Noble. No other play, huh? All right. Well, I'm gonna play Oko. Make a food pass. Well, if he, if he misses on land for a turn and doesn't have like a fantastic play this turn, then I kind of feel like next turn is going to start to be decent. Kinnan, Bonder, Prodigy, and a Mindstone. Okay, uh, let's start with Expressive Iteration. Could find a removal spell, that'd be nice. All right, Burst Lightning. So, what I think I'm going to do. I can't cast Burst Lightning off Polluted Delta. I don't have a, it doesn't get an untapped land. Um, but I definitely want Burst Lightning. So I guess Burst Lightning in hand, Exile Virtue. Cast Virtue. Well, I guess cast Ardenvale play Fealty. And then Give him a food and take Kinnan. I think that's the plan. All right, well, he drew a land. He has access to five mana and has five spells in hand now because he didn't play a land last turn. So hopefully it's not like 
play sneak, sneak an Emrakul or something. <laughs> if that's the case, that's the case. If I can fade this turn, I feel like I'll be in pretty good shape. Okay, Rafelos is a good start. Wait, what is this? Oh, Green Suns for two, Devoted Druid. All right, this is kind of a lot of mana dorks. I will say that. So what am I hoping to draw here? A Wall of Roots. All right. Mm, oh, Ponder's really nice. Let's start with Ponder, because I can still cast all my spells. Get Lost, I guess, is the card I want most. I think that's better than Shuffling. Land, because I can do that. Let's... Mm, is attacking any good? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast Burst Lightning on Rafelos. And then I'm going to Oko the Noble and pass the turn here. And then at some point, I'm going to maybe cast Get Lost. At this point, I can double block the Noble. Part of why Okoing, I think the Noble was good, is that it is uh, no longer in play to give Exalted, so I can double block it as a 3-3. Tried of the Elysian Grove. I think I'll memory lapse that. Oh, I guess I have to sack my land. Because I, I would really like to cast this Virtue of Loyalty next turn. I think that that would be a useful thing to do. It's not that I think that the Dryad in particular is that strong. Okay, no plays. And... Do you attack with the noble, the noble elk? Did not. Oh. Maybe that's better than. Yeah, let's go flame tongue. Kill the noble. Attack with both. Yeah, block. I don't think I need to. To do anything else this turn. I don't really need to kill the Wall of Roots with uh, or make a Wall of Roots into a 3-3 I don't think because last turn with this much mana Janara played the card he's going to draw this turn and nothing else so it kind of feels like that's reasonably likely to be the same play. Maybe he's got a different play now. Who knows? I have Get Lost in hand. Oh he's got Tamio Collector of Tales. What are we doing with that? All right, plus one -ing. It's two cards in hand. Let's hope that doesn't go up to three. It did not. He na his Primeval Strip Mine Memory Jar, Pete Land. I'm going to guess he named Sneak Attack. Let's see. I'm just kind of curious, what does he want? Soul Ring. Oh, what do you need a Soul Ring for? Huh. That's, that's odd. Um... Yeah, make this a 3-3. Three, three. Mm. Can get back prime time. Let's see. I can attack Tamiya with everything and then cast Virtue. Yeah, I guess I have to attack. Or I could, if I get lost this, I'm not casting Virtue, which is kind of bad. And then I get to deal five. No, let's just, just attack Tamiya with everything. It's not... The Wall of Roots is doing a lot of work here. Okay, and, and then just cast Virtue of Loyalty here. And then pass the turn. And then now, now my squad is extremely large. So now, I mean, it's not quite lethal next turn, but it's really not far off. Fertile Ground, okay, into Dryad, presumably. Yeah, I mean, this looks fine to me. I guess I'll keep the shuffle effect. I've already used ponder. Inti. All right. Um, I don't think doing that does too much for me. I don't really want to discard get lost. Uh, I guess I could just attack first. Here at 18. Yeah, I don't think I need to use get lost here. I think I'd rather keep that in, in the chamber because you can block... I guess the wall could even block the 4-4. Four, four. Right. Because I'm I'm not doing lethal this turn. 
I'm going to want to try do it go for lethal next turn. Is the, do I need to do I need to make dryad into I mean, how, how much damage is on this thing? Three damage, three damage. So this just kills the dryad. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'll pass the turn, and then my things will get ginormous, and I have get lost up. Going to crack Mindstone to draw a card, sure. I mean, this is way more than lethal next turn. And I think we might be going to game three here. All right. Let's just let's just cross our fingers, no mocks. We did mold a five this game, but it was, it was a good mold of five. I mean, memory lapse into Oko, though I guess I didn't even cast the memory lapse on two. Oh, what is this? It's like an upheaval or something? Could we not be winning this game? It looks like a green sun zenith. Don't think that's going to do the trick. I guess it could be a pest infestation. No, finale x equals five. Sure. Getting titania. Targeting strip mine. I guess in response, I'll get lost the titania. That way, I think even without it, it wouldn't have been good enough, but this definitely makes it not, not enough because now the, oh, the peat land, sure. It doesn't get, you a, doesn't get you a token. All right, going to game three. Adonto Vanguard, no. I'm, I mean, I'm a little tempted to bring in Vindicate, but no, I, I kind of have to have all the fire bolts and stuff in. I still need Al, still need Spell Pierce, yeah. I think this is fine. He's got a lot more draws that just beat me than than the vice versa, but hopefully I can uh, hopefully I can Raghavan my way to victory here. Let's see, on the draw here. Mostly I'm just hoping he doesn't open on Mox or Soul Ring, uh, and that I didn't have to Mulligan again. But I think I do. Oh, this one's close, so it's a one lander on the draw, but it's like on the double draw with Probe. Any blue land lets me cast Ponder. And then I have a pretty good hand, because Firebolt's good, Spellbinder's good. Actually, I'm going to keep this hand. I think this hand is good against, good enough against his deck that on the double draw, I'm willing to keep it. All right, Jetmere's Garden's actually a pretty good turn one play, because now I can Firebolt his Rafelos. Hopefully, I really hope it's Rafelos. Oh, well, Devoted Druid works too. All right, let's draw and probe and see what's up. Oh, and I drew blue. Your hand is all lands and a dryad? Okay, I like that. Let's go... Tundra, Ponder. So two land and a reprieve. Yeah, I think that's probably good enough. No shuffle, and then Firebolt the Devoted. And then next turn, I'm going to... Spellbinder, kind of hope he didn't draw anything good because I know he's going to play that into Peatland. I'm going to go Spellbinder here and see what's up. Mindstone, all right. I mean, that's actually not bad because taking the Mindstone like that at least wastes some of his mana. Plays the Cradle and hopefully it's just Mindstone. All right, one card in hand plus one exiled card. Two, three, four. And then on my turn, I can play Dungeoneer or Chandra. I think I just play Dungeoneer. Because I don't care too much about the Dryad right now. I guess killing the Dryad does make Gaia's Cradle t not tap for mana. But getting Dungeoneer in play is awesome. All right, so let's go Savannah, Dungeoneer. And this is the turn I have to kind of fade. As long as... Uh, let's get another island, I guess. As long as he doesn't top deck this turn, it's pretty good for me. Because this even is going to get to explore. Get a mountain off the top because it's a, a cleric. He's going to crack Mindstone end of turn. So he's got the draw step you drew last turn, plus the Mindstone, plus this turn. But his deck also has a lot of cards that depend on other cards. So... He might not be able to do something enormous. No, don't be sneak. No, don't be sneak into a creature. Oh. 
cool. Well, that is that. And uh, we are <laughs> just primeval titan. Sure. I did the best I could. That is what I did. We uh, unfortunately lost the draft because Connor, <laughs> Connor went one two with uh, all those pieces of power, which, yeah, it does happen. Yeah, this deck was a totally fine fair deck. Given the cards we had access to, I don't mind showing or ending up in this position. I mean, Raghavan went a long way. I was really happy taking Raghavan over uh, fourth year Lingus with then Memory Lapse, Remand, Reprieve, a bunch of removal, a couple Planeswalkers, Dungeoneer. It just was slow. This deck needed even like a Mox Diamond would have helped a lot. And, you know, we went one and two, and uh, I feel like couldn't have done a whole lot there. I was really hoping Janara didn't draw like basically his two combo cards together because he's running a deck that needs to draw A plus B a lot, and he drew the Sneak, and then he drew a card that went with it and had three draw steps to draw them and drew Sneak, Emrakul, Titan <laughs> in those three. So... Yep, not great for me, and uh, unfortunately, today was an L. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you tomorrow with another cube draft. Maybe some more wins in that one. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and you won't miss a single draft.